to, uh, to give a little pitch on Parabos. This is uh, a new website that was launched uh, at BEEF uh, 2021 of this year. Um, it, it is uh, nested under a bigger Parabos umbrella, which uh, has been around for quite some time uh, for sheep parasites. And uh, it's, a, it's a free uh, website for um, managing and treating different parasites of cattle. If you go into the website, um, uh, you can see on the left hand side, that's what the, uh, the uh, home page looks like. Um, we've got four suites, Worm Boss, Tick Boss, Fly Boss and Lice Boss. Um, the original Paraboss for Sheep site was set up back in 2005. It was um, very successful and they extended it to include Lice Boss for Sheep uh, in 2008. Then in 2012 they put in Fly Boss for Sheep. 2016 they extended it to Goats. Uh, and uh, the research that, uh, that I've recently completed um, is putting in the four cattle suites. So it's covering off on parasites of um, sheep, goats, cattle. Okay. Um, I haven't prepared it by any uh, stretch uh, of your imagination. I'm not an expert across all of these different parasites and systems. So we've got a huge list of contributors. Um, and we had experts uh, write the content, review the content, and we had it peer reviewed as well. Uh, the little orange um, uh, labels there, we had a, a technical committee overseeing each of the bosses as well. So lots of people involved. Um, it was very much a herding cats exercise to get it all done, but um, we managed to do it. Uh, the the um, uh, website itself will go onto your big computer. It's also will scale into a mobile phone, so it's mobile friendly, which is um, very nice. That's one of the new new additions. And um, if you go into the site, each of the suites is a standalone site. So um, this suite is Tick Boss for cattle. They're all set up in a very similar framework. Um, we have across the top here a banner, uh, which is effectively the different menus. Uh, and we've got um, treatment pages, management pages, an annual program, uh, sort of biology pages, and then more sort of courses and, and um, newsletters and things. Um, set up very much mapping to what has already been in existence for the sheep, um, sheep parables. So um, we, we're trying to sort of uh, align, I guess, across the different, the different systems. Um, up here, I'm going up and I'm selecting, uh, I'm hovering over the ticks and tick boss. You can see um, a menu has popped up. If you click on, um, you click on that menu, the menu will come up, and each of these is then a connectable, uh, connectable link. This is under that biology heading. Um, we've covered off on a lot of background, a lot of information about the different ticks out there. We've got cattle tick, um, bush tick, paralysis tick. We've also got the diseases vectored by those ticks. Um, uh, and uh, one, of the, one of the nice things that's there, if you're um, unfamiliar with how to identify ticks, we, uh, we have a nice little graphic. Um, so this is really targeted at producers. We're not giving you every single taxonomic character you need to identify ticks. We're just trying to give you the things that are relatively um, uh, usable as a producer to identify it. So really when you're trying to differentiate ticks, you're looking at the adult engorged females. They're the big things you're going to get off your, your animals. Um, we've got the cattle tick on the left, they've got the yellow legs, they're widely spaced. Uh, paralysis tick, grey body, the legs are all up near the head end, they've got big mouth parts hanging out the front. Um, bush tick, red legs, um, a little bit further up the body. Uh, and then we've also put the, the brown dog tick in because often people will see ticks on their dogs uh, and assume that they've come off the cattle. So no, they're on your dog, um, they're, they're different again. So just easy sort of identification guides. Um, under that biology section, we also have um, lots of information about uh, the different life cycles of the ticks when it comes to management and uh, treating your cattle. Uh, knowing that a cattle tick is a one host tick, those ticks are sitting on the cattle their entire uh, life cycle. Once they've hatched, um, come up the grass and attached onto your animals, they go through their full molt, uh, molt and growth on the animal. So treating for cattle tick is a heck of a lot easier than treating for bush or paralysis tick, which are three host ticks. They drop between, uh, between molts, and which means they're on, a, they're on your animals for a much smaller window of time, much more difficult to control. And, and knowing a little bit about biology helps you with your management. 
So um, we've got the life cycles there. There's lots of text around it as well. Um, I'm really just giving you kind of little tidbits of information. Shifting across now onto management. So the idea of the website is not to just go in there and say, here's a chemical, go and use it. Um, we want you to try and, uh, and sort of look at parasites in a more holistic point of view. So we're giving you options um, for control, for treatment, uh, managing, trying to reduce tick numbers on your animals. So within management, uh, you know, we're talking about whether you're going to try and eradicate ticks versus just control the numbers down to a threshold that's less costly. Um, if you're going to be monitoring, so you're not going to try and eradicate, you're just going to monitor it, then how do you look for ticks? Well, how do you count ticks? Um, keeping them out, so if you've got particularly susceptible animals, putting them into paddocks where they haven't got um, feral deer coming in and spreading, spreading ticks. Uh, we've also, again, got the tick-borne diseases, so tick vaccines and um, uh, means in, in, by which you can keep bettongs out, so do a bit of slashing if you've got long grass. Um, so lots of sort of management options there. The annual program, so the annual program, um, this map may look familiar if you've seen the um, MLA Cattle Atlas. This is pretty much pulled out of that. Um, in terms of um, uh, management zones and the sort of parasites that occur across those zones, they haven't changed. They're, they're very much the same. This thing, though, is now clickable. The, um, the annual program is the same across all four of the suites. We've consolidated all the information in, so you can go through any of the bosses and get uh, your annual program information. You come in and you click on your region. And for this instance, we're going to pretend we're in tropical coastal Queensland. Um, if we click on the area, the only thing that differs across the sites will be the order with which those parasites pop up. If you're in tick boss, ticks come to the top. If you're in fly boss, flies come to the top. Um, but all of the information is there. Um, if you click on the little, little down arrows, um, for this part of the world, it'll tell you that cattle tick and paralysis tick are an issue. It tells you when they're going to be increasing in numbers and when you should be thinking about treating. It also tells you that you've lucked out and buffalo flies are also a problem in this area. And again, the window of time when we'll be thinking about treating. You can go down and open up all of the zones and depending on which region you're in in Australia, it'll tell you what, what parasites are problematic and when. Okay, we've now shifted over to treatment. So this is now more of the sort of chemical products. It tells you all about um, all the different chemical actives, all the different application methods, because different application methods can impact what the chemicals do and, and how they work and how long for. Um, this particular aspect of the Sheep Parabos website was, it was and is by far the most hit by producers. So this is um, how to select a chemical uh, for, for treating your parasite. What they've done with this is um, they have created an enormous back end that includes uh, sheep, goats, cattle, all the chemicals, all the products, and, and you, you basically filter down by, by making selections. So Parasite and Animal says you're looking at ticks on cattle or worms in sheep. So simple, select your parasite, select your host. If you want to search for a particular product name, you can put a product name in. Don't have to. Um, if you have a particular group or active, so let's say you're wanting to change actives uh, between uh, seasons to control your parasites, to make sure you're mixing it up, you can, you can tell it, I'm only, I'm only interested in synthetic pyrethroids, or I'm only interested in amitraz. Um, if you know that you don't have a dip, you can go in there and say, I'm only interested in porons, or I'm only interested in um, sprays, or, or whatever application method you want. You don't have to select anything, it'll come up with a massive list. Um, Particularly if you've got, uh, if, you, if you're going to slaughter or you, you need to know um, length of protection and withholding periods. And you can, you can set them at whatever you want and it will just uh, filter and narrow down the search uh, and it will pop up with all the products and uh, how they're applied, what your options are. So this is the sort of the most used part of this website. Um, however, there's an awful lot more there. So we've got a lot on um, a caricide resistance in this instance, but pesticide resistance. Um, what is it? How can you try to minimise it? Occupational health and safety pages. Uh, we've got things on dung beetles. We've got things on um, environmental toxicity of chemicals. 
Um, and what have I got down the bottom there? Oh, yeah, more about the diseases, tick-borne diseases, and what you can do to, to control those. I've just given you a really brief overview of tick boss. Okay, there's, there's three other sweets there, worm boss, lice, uh, lice boss, and fly boss. You can see they're all set up with the same sort of structure. They all navigate the same sort of way. We've got identification. On the, on the front pages, um, we've got hot topics. So these are just the, the pages that people often go to and want to get to quickly. So if you don't want to have to navigate your way through the, um, the menus, they, that might be the quickest way there. Um, and so things like the product search guide is just a quick link off the front. So there's a, there's a heap more information there. They're, they're just some of the, the quick links people like to get to. There's heaps in there. Um, it, it's pretty new. It's only been out since May. Um, we did pitch it at, um, at Beef, uh, and I did have a, um, I gave a little dairy, uh, a tick workshop to some of the dairy folks, and I had some people who came to that workshop and went, we came and talked to you about Beef, and it was so good, we really loved the website. So, you know, if you'd like it and you, and you, uh, you think it might be useful, please tell people it exists. It's the word of mouth, as we've sort of been discussing across these meetings, that, that gets, the, gets the information out there. So... Um, yeah, great. Questions? Mate, have you got a, um, a fact sheet on, on Parabos itself? <clears throat> the only reason why I'm saying is that to help spread the word that, you know, when, for me, if I'm out in the, SD, yep. in the southeast corner here, when we're running workshops, because I'm out there, say, Boomer on Wednesday, yep. you know, it goes on the table and everyone can pick it up and go, wow, I wasn't aware it is. Um, we, we definitely did at Beef. Um, and MLA, uh, so, so since beef happened, <laughs> yeah. um, the running of Parabos has now um, been taken over by Animal Health Australia, um, and they did create some handouts at the time. Okay. Um, so MLA would definitely be... Um, they, it might be one in your bag, actually. Oh, okay. Right. Could, right. could, oh, I haven't seen it, but anyway. Yeah. Oh, I can just photocopy yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're yeah, 50, you know. so it's sort of um, I, my, um, I'd say my official involvement um, kind of finished in May when we finished creating the site. It's, it's then been sort of dispersed to the people who are now managing it. So Animal Health Australia, um, UNE is doing this. They do a whole lot of teaching, so upskilling vets um, to get accredited for worm counts and things across the board. So that's um, being run through UNE. Uh, and then there's now a... Um, technical kind of committee which is separate to UNE. UNE was doing all of this um, prior to now. Uh, they've now split it into th three things mm -hmm. um, and uh, Matt Playford's doing the technical committee down New mm -hmm. South Wales. So um, he's invited me to be involved in that technical committee but we haven't, um, that hasn't progressed at this yeah. point. So, yeah. Yes. So, um, for the... Um treatment side of it and the chemicals being used, yep. obviously that's going to be an extensive database sitting behind there with all the, all the chemicals. So are the manufacturers contacting you to say, hey, we've got a new product on the market, can we add it or whatever? Is so, something like that in place? Yeah, so the, um, what they did with this site, it, because there are so many um, chemicals on PubChris that are no longer available, mm -hmm. they very specifically, instead of just doing a massive data extract or dump from PubChris, mm. they said, we're not going to do that. We're going to go to each of the chemical companies and specifically tell, you know, ask them to provide us with what products they have. Mm. So if a product is missing, there was one or two companies that hadn't, didn't really respond terribly rapidly, let's say. Um, but, but now that the site's live and they're effectively missing out by not yeah. being on their... Um, hopefully, they've been their uptake has been um, better. So there should be all of the products that pop up should be available products. Yeah. Um, and as new products come on the market, they get they get yeah. added. Yeah. Um, I just had a question on sort of on the same line. Yep. When you can go in and um, determine what what actives you need for your particular situation. Yep. There are regions that do have certain amounts of resistance that has been shown. Yep. Is that, are you able to put regions in or factor that in, or is that a conversation that they'd probably have to have on their bed or their... Yeah, their so team? resistance is a biggie. It's a huge um, 
on the on the physical chemical product pages under the different products mm -hmm. where we have resistance maps um, unfortunately the only available maps we could include were dated up to 2005 yeah. so we actually have uh, the, let's call them historic um, DAF testing maps which would tell you things um, that you probably already well know that there's lots of amitraz resistance and the, and the year bracket that resistance has, has come in the the tricky thing with resistance is that if you have very good biosecurity on your property, you may have no resistance. Whereas a neighbouring property that's bringing new animals in all the time may have terrible resistance. So it's very difficult to map resistance in anything but a fairly generic way. So you might be a little sea of of susceptible in you know sorry a little island of susceptible in a sea of, of resistance. Um, we're try I'm trying to source some funding to, to update those maps yeah. with biosecurity Queensland. Um, but so far the, the pot has been not given. <laughs> the pot it does not give it. Um, we're hoping we're hoping mid next year okay. we'll get into that funding round. Yeah. So um, resistance is definitely big. You can get a. Uh, we do have um, so what I didn't show you on that search engine. It will tell you. Um, it will give you a, an idea of whether resistance is present for that chemical. So there is a there is a little bit of information there. But realistically, if, if it's something like ticks, and you're in Queensland, send your ticks for free testing to um, biosecurity labs. They'll test them and tell you what they're resistant to. If you've got what you think is a is a outbreak, there is a huge section in tick boss on how to collect the ticks, where to send them, what will be done, the different things they test. So uh, there is stuff on resistance there. There's ways to try and manage resistance, but uh, it it's not as straightforward as just a, a yes. you know, yeah, because it it really will be a case of property by property. Problem. Problem.